Stay in Brisbane now. Joining us is the opposition leader, David Christofulli. David, uh, good to see you this morning. So were you as shocked as everyone else was when the call came yesterday? Yeah, I was, Peter, and the way that it's unfolded, I, I had a, a lot of events yesterday and the overwhelming feedback from people was a, a real sense of distaste with the way it was handled. It, ultimately, it should have been Queenslanders that got a chance to pass judgement, um, not the three undermining uh, um, members of the Premier's Cabinet and not unelected people, uh, power brokers within the Labor Party. And I think that's what's left people most uncomfortable, the way it's all handled, at a time when the government should be focused on all manner of things that are burning through the Queensland economy. Mm. And you've heard me talk about the challenges that we face at the moment. We've, we've got a housing crisis, a health crisis, a youth crime crisis, a cost of living crisis. We've got a cyclone that's bearing down on the far northern coast and the government is at war with itself. No one wins when that's the case. Mm. What do you think it was that did her in? Unsure, Peter, and, and my focus isn't on the internal machinations of the Labor Party. Uh, someone's got to be fighting for Queenslanders, and we are. And I want Queenslanders to know that we are listening to them and we are out and about. I'm about to go to Moreton Bay where that community is really suffering from the, the housing pressure and they want mm. infrastructure partnerships to open up opportunities for them. I'm then going to jump on a plane and I'm going to Townsville where the last week has been the worst week of youth crime that city's seen in a long, long time. And I'm keeping another eye out on the far north where this cyclone uh, looks imminent. Now, they should be the focuses of the government. Instead, you've got three people jostling for the job they want rather than doing the job that they've got mm. and the one they need to be doing. And, um, and, and we've just got to continue to fight for Queenslanders and show the issues that matter to them. Who would you prefer to go up against next year, David? Peter, it doesn't matter, and, and I'll tell you why. All three of them have been there the whole time. All three of them have held positions like health minister. All three of them have involved, been involved in the youth crime crisis, and all three of them have had portfolios uh, touching on planning. So, in the end, it's the same faces have sat around the same table. And uh, my, my focus has to be on putting forward alternate solutions, and we've done that for all... For every one of those crises I've spoken about, we do have the right priorities for Queensland's future and the government's at war with themselves. And I want Queenslanders to know that we're, we're going to fight for them and make sure that there's a better way come October next year. So the polls showed a, a strong dip in support for Palaszczuk um, over several months now. Did you see that as a reflection on her leadership or did you see that as a reflection on the whole government, the whole party? Peter, at risk of sounding um, a, a little boring, I, I, I didn't reflect on it because it's not what people are talking to me about. And I, I spent a lot of time out and about in the community yesterday. No one was talking to me about internal machinations of the Labor Party or, or, or politics yeah. at all. Uh, I, I never have Queenslanders raise polling with me. I'll tell you what they are raising, though. They're wondering whether or not their kids can own a home one day and they're wondering whether or not they're safe in their homes and they're wondering if they pick up a phone if an ambulance is going to turn up. That's my focus and that's mm. my priority. And the government, well, they can be at war with themselves. I, I'm focused on Queenslanders. OK. Uh, I've got to say, I choked on my week picks this morning when I saw um, Wayne Swan on another network um, saying the unions had nothing to do with it um, yesterday. Uh, but what... Um, yeah, exactly... What, what, what has struck me and perhaps a lot of people, David, and I'll get your view on this, is, is just uh, perhaps this is a reminder of how much control unions have over the Labor Party in Queensland. Uh, make no mistake, um, they, they're heavily involved. But there's also been three uh, people who are part of that Cabinet who should have been focused on Queenslanders and they haven't been. And the destabilising campaign, I've never seen anything like it in, in my time um, from, from a government and to see the destabilising campaign at a time when people are under real pressure and, and when I say real pressure I mean across so many fronts and to know that they have effectively blasted a Premier out of office I don't think that sits comfortably with, with Queenslanders regardless whether or not they support the Premier or whether or not they don't. That should have been a matter of for Queenslanders to be able to exercise. The way that it's been done, uh, my deputy described it as a calculated Christmas coup. And that was a couple of weeks ago. And I, I think he was bang on the money when he said that. David, just as an aside to all of that, um, if you win next year, are you going to continue with the redevelopment of the Gabba? Uh, Peter, my position on that hasn't changed for the last two years. And that is that project hasn't got our support yet. And it's yet to earn our support. And I'll tell you why. 
it was costed at one billion, and then all of a sudden one day it was costed at two point seven billion. We haven't seen a business case for either. When the government bid for the games, they said there would be an independent infrastructure delivery authority to be able to make sure that they, those were scrutinised. Well, that's been withdrawn, and the states decided to go it alone. And when the whole idea of an Olympic bid was uh, was flagged with Queenslanders, we were told it would be about generational infrastructure, roads and rail, a 20-year tourism vision. Well, all of that's taken a back seat, and it's all been about one sporting stadium. And the government's given... Queensland has absolutely no visibility about it whatsoever. Nothing. We haven't seen the first business case, the second business case, and I'm sorry, but my position hasn't changed. I want an independent infrastructure delivery authority because that's what was promised for Queenslanders, and we shouldn't be in the business of writing blank cheques without proper scrutiny. And so that project hasn't got my support, um, and it's yet to earn it, and that nothing will change. Um, the, the way this government is conducting itself. Oh, OK, uh, that's the Queensland Opposition Leader, David Chrysofulli. Thank you, David, for your time. We'll talk to you again soon.